Kenny, you were happy with the offense today? I thought they just brought energy. I thought their, their, their urge, sorry, my voice is gone. Their uh, urgency was high. I thought their urgency to get lined up, their urgency to see the signal, their urgency to communicate, right, was better. Were there a few things that we still demonstrated that we didn't get applied? Yes, that's why you practice, right? You practice to clean those up. Eventually, really good teams can take it from the meeting room, you walk through it, and they apply it. Right now, it's meeting room, walk through it, mess it up, then apply it. We gotta eventually get to skip that step. But the urgency was there. How much does belief play into a game like this in a week of preparation like this going up against USC? Belief, you can pick your word. If you don't expect to win every game, you got a problem. I don't care if I'm playing Michael Jordan in basketball. I'm not playing him to lose. Otherwise, why would I, why would I play? I'm not just going to play because it's fun. No, what's fun is competing to win. So you're playing to win. That's it. And if you don't, whether, whatever happens after the game, it doesn't matter. You then watch the tape and you get better and you grow and you get better and you grow and get better. And eventually, right, Saturday nights are going to feel better. But if you don't take the field and you expect to win the football game, something's wrong. You should expect to win. You, you should, that's, otherwise, you shouldn't be on the field. Coach, how do you contain Caleb Williams? <laughs> I mean, you can't. You can't. You have to limit it. Right? You have to limit it. You have to, when you're, when you're there to make a play, you have to limit it. To say you're going to stop him is almost unrealistic. The goal should be to limit him. Limit the explosive plays. Don't let him get comfortable and in a rhythm. Right? Don't bust and give them open people for him to get in a rhythm. But to say you're going to stop right, Caleb Williams, I, I, that's, that's tough to do. The goal is to limit him, get them off schedule, right? Get them in a position, get after the get after the passer while still being able to keep coverage right for him. And when you get to him, contain him. He's the master at pump fake evade. He feels pressure. He waits, he waits, he waits, right? And he's like a boxer, counter punch, right? He's elite at that. So we have to know what he's gonna do before he do, does it. That sounds easy, really, really hard. <laughs> he's a really good football player. On the other side of that, I mean, I know you obviously you want your ends to be aggressive, obviously set an edge, but what's the balance there of not making sure they're uh, too over aggressive? Yeah, you got to create pressure on the quarterback, one. Two, we got to find schemes that then try to contain him, two. But if you don't create pressure, he is not a running quarterback. No, I hope nobody believes that. He is a pocket passer that can evade. Like, that's his MO. He's a pocket quarterback that can then extend plays. So you have to take away his ability in the pocket one and then try to contain him too. When there's 12 people catching a pass in basically every game for USC, what, uh, what's the mindset for the secondary? Yeah, those 12 people don't catch the game early in games. They catch the game later in games. So they got about four to five guys, four guys mainly, who are their main targets that you got to try to stop and you got to try to take out the game. With a guy like Caleb, is there a line you have to walk of showing everything he can do but not potentially gassing him too much is that he's almost like larger than life for the guys that are going up against him? No. I understand who you're playing. You're playing a really good player. You're playing a player that if you're not disciplined, he's going to tear you apart. If you don't stay in your rush lanes, if you don't track the outside hip when you're a pass rusher, if you're blitzing and you fall for a pump fake when he pump fakes when you're a free runner. If you don't understand that that's who you're playing, you're playing one of the savviest players in college football, somebody who they gets free people at him all the time, and who makes that guy miss. If you don't understand that, then you're gonna go out there and you're gonna look like a fool. You better understand who you're playing versus. This is an elite player. This is a savvy player. This is a guy who can hurt you from the pocket, hurt you out of the pocket. This is a guy who has unbelievable poise when you blitz him. So you better not fall for the pump fakes. You better not go to the wrong shoulder when you're blitzing him. You better know when you're blitzing his blind side, he's going to try to get out of there and reverse out and have a plan for that. And you better expect that he's going to make plays because when he does, you got to respond. So I don't think gassing him up too high is bad. I think our kids understanding exactly who he is is uh, what we should do. You mentioned the offense showing up 10 minutes early to start the week. And today was a good practice. Do you see this as a trend or, or, or something that some guys are responding well to after adversity? Or how do you see that? Yeah, I think the guys are just, they don't like not being good. <laughs> I think that's a good thing. Like human nature, you don't do well. There's two types of people. There's people who fold and quit, which is half of the world right now. Then there's people who compete, compete, compete to try to be better. 
Our guys are doing the ladder right now, and I'm super proud of it. And guess what? I don't know for sure that the results are going to be shown Saturday. I hope they do. I don't know. But I can see the results right now in practice. And the results are happening. The results are happening. Whether the world sees them, who knows? But I see them, and that's all that matters, is that I know our football team is getting into, going in the direction that it's supposed to go. Does that feel good for you as a coach then to see the guys buying into the mindset you're trying to instill? Yeah, that's awesome. I, I've been here before. I've been, I keep saying I've been here at Florida State. I've started on an 0-14 and lost to Jacksonville State. Finished right in four. They won nine games the next year. Now they're a top three team, right? We started like one and four in year one, one and three in year one. We had two quarterbacks go out. We were down to our third quarter. But I have been in this seat. I, that's why it's comfortable, right? You just got to stay the course. Stay the course and keep working. And don't get rattled by the outside noise. Stay focused on getting better every single day and being successful in everything you do. And eventually, eventually, Saturdays are going to show up. I think this will be the 40th meeting all time with USC. Do you have any favorite memories of watching this series growing up, coaching against them in the past? Well, my favorite memory is I was in the box for the Jail Mary. So that was pretty fun. That was unbelievable. One of the most unbelievable things I've ever been part of. So uh, that was definitely my favorite memory. Do you change tacks with Michael Brown like during a season or is this too busy? Too busy. Every once in a while, you know, two to three times a year we'll change tacks. But I mean, when you're you're up here a lot, so uh, it's just part of it. You just don't have much time. I'm sure you know about uh, Lincoln Riley's variation of counter plays. I think I saw someone call it a, a modern day triple option. From someone who ran a lot of counters at Oregon, had success with that. How hard is it to sort of flip your brain around to try to defend that? And how do you defend it? Yeah, he's been running that since uh, OU. Yeah. That's been a staple of what he's done for a long time. This flip back counter, A and uh, the H and flat, whatever you want to call that position in the flat. Uh, very common. He does it now more with the wide receivers than he did at OU when he had some split backs guys. You know, more out of the split back gun. But now it's just more wide receiver driven in the backfield, which is smart because he's he's playing basketball on grass, which is we're going to put a wide out in the backfield and create a bigger structure than the people we have on. It's like putting a point guard in the post. Right? How are you going to guard him? You're going to guard him with a point guard? Well, our point guard is bigger than you. You're not used to playing point guard in the post. Right, so similar thought process. He's a great mind. He's a phenomenal football coach, and he's uh, super creative and puts his players in the best position to be successful. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Coach. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Appreciate Have a great.